In this video, we're going to go over discriminating stimuli. Discriminating stimuli are cues that influence operant behavior by indicating the availability of a reward or punishment. Now, since we're talking about operant behavior, it's good to remind ourselves a bit about how it works. So, if you recall, operant behavior involves encouraging or discouraging specific behaviors by using rewards or punishments. So, as a simple example, if you want a child to do better on their exams, you might give the child a toy if they do well on their exams. This is going to encourage the child to do well on their exams more frequently. Another example using a punishment would be if a child does poorly on their exams, you might give them more homework. All right. So in this case, it's going to discourage the student from doing poorly on their exams and essentially get them to do well on their exams more often. Now, these examples are great for understanding the general concepts behind operant conditioning, but for the MCAT, it's also important to understand some of the actual studies that are used to demonstrate these ideas of operant conditioning. And often, we're looking at animal models. So, for example, you might have a rat, and you want the rat to press a lever for a reward, such as cocaine. We're going to use this system to illustrate the idea behind discriminating stimuli. Now, this example that we just discussed where a rat can just press a lever and get cocaine is a situation where there is no discriminating stimulus. And that's because the reward is always available, right? Anytime the rat presses the lever, that rat is going to get cocaine. Let's look at a situation where we do have a discriminating stimulus. In this case, the animal is in a chamber that's fairly dark. And if the rat just presses the lever in the dark, the rat's gonna get nothing. However, every once in a while, the experimenter is going to present two flashes of light. If the rat presses the lever just after the two flashes of light, the rat is going to get cocaine. All right, so essentially in this case, the rat is going to learn to press the lever only after the discriminating stimulus, the two flashes of light is presented. You'll notice that this is not the behavior that's lever pressing. This is also not the reward itself. It is a cue that indicates that the reward, cocaine, is going to be available. All right, so hopefully that gives you an idea of how discriminating stimuli works. Another topic that I wanna go over is generalization as well as discrimination. That's because we're saying two similar words here, right? Discriminating stimuli and discrimination. And with this example, we'll be able to demonstrate how they're illustrating two different concepts. So in this example, we're gonna have two different types of discriminating stimuli. In one case, if there are two flashes of light that occurs, if the rat presses a lever, they're gonna get cocaine. However, if instead the experimenter presents three flashes of light and the rat pushes the lever, the rat is going to get a foot shock, which is aversive because it's painful. Now, initially, the animals are just going to lever press for either discriminating stimuli. As long as the animal sees light, whether it's two flashes or three flashes, the rat is going to press the lever. This is what we call a generalization, right? In this case, the rat is not able to distinguish between the two discriminating stimuli and just considers them to be the same. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, why does it press for both? If it knows that one of them is potentially aversive, maybe it won't push at all. The reason why the animals will never press for both discriminating stimuli is because cocaine is an extremely powerful re reinforcer. So the rats are going to lever press if they have the chance of getting cocaine. Now, this is the beginning, right? Initially, the animals are just going to lever press for both discriminating stimuli. However, at some point, the animals are going to learn to discriminate. They're going to learn to lever press only after one of the discriminating stimuli, the two flashes of light, and they're going to stop pressing the lever after the other discriminating stimuli, the three flashes of light. This is discrimination. When the animal learns to press the lever only after one discriminating stimulus and not the other. Okay, 
So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of what discriminating stimuli are and how it's related to topics of generalization and discrimination.